In this video, I am going to show you how to configure QNAV TS473A NAS storage. For this purpose, we need to connect the hard disk and we need to we need to connect the network cable from network. Once after power on the device, we need to use the QNAP finding tool for finding the IP of QNAP. You can refer the previous link of my QNAP configuration I have attached in the description. Once after entering the IP address or if you are opening the QNAP from QNAP finder application, we will get the option for smart installation. I am just pressing the start smart installation. Once we use that one, we are able to see the latest firmware available in the we can verify the latest version of firmware available. Then press the update button. Here we can enter NAS name, username and user password. And we need to confirm the same password, user password. This is the user we are using to manage the NAS storage over the web browser. Here I am entering the details of NAS user and passwords. Then press the next button. Here we need to configure the time zone and time settings. Then press the next button. This is the IP we got from DHCP. If you want to configure the DHCP manually, we can configure from here. I am just configuring the IP manually. Otherwise, there is a chance of getting IP conflict. So I am just doing the IP configuration manually. Then press the next button. Here we will get the option to apply the same settings what we changed. I am just pressing the apply button. Now we need to press the initialize button. I am just pressing the initializing button. It will take time. I am doing the fast forwarding for avoiding the video lagging. Now our basic configuration has been completed. Once after changing the IP, either we can use the QNAP finder or directly we can use the IP for login. Here I am using the QNAP finder for finding the IP and logging the device. Here we need to enter the username and password of QNAP which we already configured. If you are logging first time, you will get an option for data and privacy continue button. I am just pressing the continue. Need to confirm again the same with the continue button once after crawling the details. If you are logging first time, you, we will get a guideline for managing the devices. I am leaving that part. We will get the option to manage the storage and snapshot. Here I am leaving that option. We will do manually these all the configurations. Confirm the data collection agreement. Here we are able to see the what all are the drives we are connected in the NAS. In this NAS I have already connected two M2 storages and normal hard drives for storing the data. Two M2 SSD for caching and two drives for storing the data. Here I am using the mirrored oleum for caching and storing data for the security purpose and increasing the speed of NAS. For manual configuration of storage, we need to press the storage or snapshots, then press the new, then press the create storage pool wizard. I am selecting press new storage pool, then press the next button. Here we need to select the two NAS drive which we are using for storing the data. If you want to use any write options, we need to use write here. Here I am using the mirrored volume. So I am using write 1. If you are using the extended partition, that means we can combine the both hard drives. Write 0. Here I am using write volume. So I am using the write 1. If we are having three hard drives, we can use one for hot spare. If one get failed, another one will automatically active. Here I have only two hard drive. So if I am using the mirrored volume, I will get data on both hard drive. If one fail over the second one, we will get the data. Then press the next button. Here we can set the alert threshold. That will help you to get the notification once the hard drive is getting alert threshold percentage. Also we can configure the pool guaranteed snapshot space. Here I am usually using 20% so I am keeping the same as default. Then I am pressing the next button. Now we can validate the all the configuration what we have made. Then press the create button. Then press the ok button for starting the process. It will take time. I am doing the fast forwarding for avoiding the video lagging. Once after creating the storage pool, we will get a pop up for creating volumes. Here we need to select the storage pool location. 
then on i am using the default one on demand space and we need to select the location storage pool here i am using the which one we created before and then press the next button then press the ok button for processing here we can set the data volume size here i am setting maximum pool capacity then i am pressing the next button then confirm with the ok button i am using the default configuration for this whole purpose in snapshot i am keeping the default one i am pressing the next button now we can see our configuration summary once after we need to press the finish button it will take time for completing the process i am doing the fast forwarding here also meanwhile i am setting the ssd caching for this purpose i need to select cache acceleration then we need to press the plus button for creating the caching here we need to press the next button here we need to select the ssds available in the nas storage i am selecting both ssds here i am using the ssd caching with the raid so i need to select the mirrored volume here i am using mirrored ssd caching so i am using the raid 1 for selecting the cache type we will get read only read write and write only here i am using read only for this purpose if we are using the read only method once we are retrieving the data the data will be fast compare with the writing time then i am pressing the next button here i am selecting all io this is a best option for selecting the read write mechanism because this nas drive i am using for multiple computer data sharing then press the next button here we need to select the data pool for caching ssd so i am selecting the default data volume for caching purpose here i am selecting the data volume which we created before then i am pressing the next button here we can see our configuration summary i am pressing the create button here we need to enable the checkbox so i understand and need to press the okay button because if is there any data available in the ssd it will lose once we create the ssd caching ssd caching is still initiating once it is finished we can see the ssd caching service has been enabled now our ssd caching and storage pool configuration also finished If you want to create a user for accessing the data from any network devices press the control panel then select the users tab then create the users username and password and repeat the password here we can allow the user for user group and shared folder permissions and also edit application privileges then press the create button here i am leaving as it is and then press the create button this will be manageable once after creating the users for creating the shared folder we can use the folder selection creating new shared folder here i am entering the name of shared folder and selecting the data volume then pressing the next button for the user access privilege we can select the users for giving the permission to access this folder here we are able to see three options one is read only another one is read write and the third one is deny if you are giving the read only permission those users can able to see the contents they cannot change anything if it is read write they can delete create and modify the data if it is deny they are not able to log in the folder then press the next button then press the finish button you can refer the reference video how to access the nas storage from the pc Thank you for watching this video. If you like the video, please press the like button, share and subscribe.